What's up guys, welcome back to another video and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your drums hit harder. All right, so I think this is probably one of the most sought out topics in the hip hop community, and rightfully so, because hip hop is a very drum driven, drum prominent genre. So as hip hop producers, we wanna make sure our drums cut through the mix. Now I'm gonna be honest, I put off making this video for a really long time because for most of us, especially if you're just starting out, we all just kinda want like this one size fits all solution for mixing, and that's not necessarily the case. Nonetheless, today I'm gonna be showing you guys the steps that I take to make sure that my drums cut through the mix and that they sound good. Now all these tips and techniques today are very fundamentally driven so you can take them home and apply them to your mix. However, more likely than not, you are going to have to adjust and mold to your specific scenario because no two mixes are the same. All right, so the first step that I take actually goes before the mixing and it's extremely simple, super fundamental, but it's super important. What I'm talking about is good sound selection. Now it makes no sense for you to put 10 plugins on your kick in the mixing phase to make it sound good when you could have just picked a better kick to begin with. And I would even kind of knock that further back and say that you have to make sure you get quality samples. If your samples are very low quality and they don't sound good, it doesn't matter what you do, they're not going to sound great. And the same thing goes with arrangement. If you create a beat and you arrange it in such a way that it's very cluttered, that there's a lot of instruments that kind of take up the low end, you're going to have a very hard time trying to get those drums to cut through. So step one, make sure you have good quality samples, make sure you have the appropriate sounds, a good sound selection, and three, make sure your arrangement is on par. Moving on, the next step for me is to make sure that my drums are the prominent feature in my mix, and I do this with volume. Now, believe it or not, a good portion of mixing actually has to do with volume adjustments, or as some people call it, leveling. So logic will tell us that if we want our drums to hit a little bit harder, sound a little bit louder, we wanna make sure we place them a little bit above, a little bit louder than the rest of our instruments. Now, jumping in the studio one real quick, this is actually the mixing session for the last Last beat that I put out for my Beat Making Monday series. This was called Reconcile and this one was the Halsey type beat. So I'm gonna be using this session to demonstrate for you guys, but if you take a look, this is kind of like my beat mixing template, my routing schematic and with a bunch of the plugins that I used. But if you take a look at the bottom right here, I kind of route all of my instruments and drums into specific buses. So this here is my instruments bus. I route all of my instruments to it and then I have a drums bus where I route all my drums to it. That way also if I wanna process my drums individually without affecting the instruments, I can do that or vice versa. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play this beat and I want you to take a look at the instrument bus and the drums bus. And you're gonna notice how the drums bus sits a little bit higher than the instrument bus. So here we go. So as you can see, one of the first few things you can do to make your drums kind of stand out is to make sure that they sit a little bit higher than everything else in your mix. Now, quick pro tip, if you are using MIDI, make sure you raise the velocity of your drums as high as it can go. Now, I don't recommend this for actual instruments because that will change the tone of whatever you're playing, specifically for like pianos and roads, but for your drums, raise them all the way up. Now, if you don't know what velocity is, essentially in layman's terms, think of it as like how hard you hit something. If I were to lightly tap this table, you'd probably be barely able to hear it, but if I were to hit it a little bit harder, you can now see that it's louder. So same thing with the drums. If I were to highlight my drum and the kick for this beat, you can see that I've raised the velocity here at the bottom. And if I were to bring it down, they're quieter. So pull them all the way up. This gives you more control whenever you are actually adjusting the volume in the mixing phase. Moving on down, the next thing you can do is to make sure you remove unwanted frequencies. Now, if I had to explain mixing to someone who didn't know anything about music, I would say it's essentially the balancing of all the sounds that you have in front of you. And essentially what you're doing is you're carving out space, you're making space for everything to live. Now jumping back into the mix real quick, you'll see that I have a bunch of EQs on my sounds. Now what an EQ does, at least for the sake of this tutorial, is it helps you carve out space to make sure that all the sounds are able to sit well in your mix. Now if I open up the EQ for my kick real quick, you're gonna see that I cut off everything below 50 hertz. Now for this specific kick sample, a lot of the energy was around the 50 to 60 hertz range. So I cut everything below off, which also gave me some room for the 808 and the bass to sit. Now opening up the EQ for the bass, 
As you can see, I rolled off everything on the higher end, about 10K and above. There was really nothing there for me. And I cut off everything below 25 Hertz. Now, this is probably a topic of debate. Some people will tell you that they don't roll off anything on the lower end of their bases in 808s. However, from personal experience, a lot of the, the bases and 808s that I've dealt with don't really have anything valuable below 25 hertz and all it ends up doing is just muddying your mix and preventing the rest of your drums to shine now it's probably good to point out here that there's so many other ways to make sure your drums sit well specifically with eq i know a lot of people who will also find where most of the energy for the kick lives then go into the eq for the bass find it and make a little dip that way the kick is able to cut through you could also try side chaining the kick to the bass slash 808 that way every time the kick hits that bass slash 808 just kind of dips at the end of the day though the goal is to create room to create space for all your sounds to live so taking a look back Everything that I've showed you so far has been native within your DAW. We haven't used any third-party plugins. A lot of what I showed you has had more to do with picking the right sounds, adjusting volume and EQing, and that's really all that you need for the most part to get a good mix to make sure your drums are cutting through the mix and sound good. However, this last step is kind of my favorite because it's like the icing on the cake. Now, the last step that I do to make sure my drums cut through is to add some sort of saturation, distortion, or harmonic content now without getting too nerdy into what these plugins actually do essentially they add undertones and overtones to trick your brain into thinking that that sound that signal sounds louder when it really doesn't it's called perceived loudness all right so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna play the mix from the hook section I'm gonna play everything first with and without the plugin that I use for the drums then I'm gonna solo the drums and do the same thing so you guys can get a proper comparison of what this does okay so I'm gonna play the the beat with the hook and then midway through I'm gonna take it off. Here we go. This is with the plugin Without Now let's do the same thing with the drums. So this is with Without. Now, I don't know how well that translated over to YouTube, but at least here in the studio, uh, through my headphones and through my speakers, I have eight inch Yamahas. It's not anything drastic, but it definitely gives it that oomph that you need to make sure that your drums cut through, especially when you're listening to consumer speakers like a laptop or maybe your car. Now, the plugin that I use to do this is the UAD Little Labs Voice of God. This is basically a bass resonance tool that adds a little bit of that harmonic content saturation to a specific frequency. Unfortunately, this is $150 and only available if you have the uh, Apollo interface. If you can't get it, I highly recommend it. Probably one of my top ones. However, if you don't, I have a couple other options. Another good option is the Waves R Bass. I have it, I've used it before. I think it's about $39 last time I checked. That's also a good option. You also have Decapitator from Sound Toys. I've talked about them before. I love that plugin. It is $200, but what I would recommend is just pick up the whole bundle. I think. Originally, it's 500 bucks, but every summer they have like a half off sale, which is when I, I got mine. So for like 250, which is 50 more than the original price of this plugin, you can get the entire bundle. But Decapitator is also a good one. You could also get a sausage fattener from Dada Life. I believe that's $39 as well. And if you don't want to spend any money, Camel Crusher. I believe is still available and it's still free. Now I'm gonna put all the links to every single one of those plugins down in the description box below so you can check them out. But essentially, that is it guys, that is what I do. I make sure I pick good samples, quality samples. Uh, I make sure that all my sounds sound well together, good sound selection. I make sure that I arrange my beat in such a way that I give my drums room to breathe. I make sure that I make my drums the prominent feature in my mix with the volume by placing them just a little bit louder than the rest of my mix. I make sure that I cut off any unwanted frequencies, frequencies that could be muddying up or preventing my drums from cutting through. 
and I add, if I can, if you can, add some saturation, some harmonic content, some distortion to your mix and to your drums, it'll make them sound so much better. But again, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you. If you liked this video, if it helped you, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if not already, but I'll see you guys on the next one.